I'm about 220 hours and 350 meters of filament in on my i3 Mark III. Let me tell you what I think. You might have seen my video two weeks ago where I did a speed build of my i3 Mark III kit. Since then, I've been pretty busy. I've printed with three different slicing softwares, about seven different filaments across ABS and PLA, and a range of decorative as well as functional models. After the calibration, the good news was that my frame and everything else was square and I was ready to print. Last time, I left you hanging on what would be my first print. Since it was Easter, I did the Maker's Muse Easter Egg Torture Test. If you haven't seen this model, please check out Angus's video. You can download it for free, but I chose to show my appreciation with a couple of dollars for his time, skill and effort. The first slicer I tried was Prusa Control. It has a really polished front end where you drop in your model and all of the settings are taken care of for you. All you gotta do is click the magic button and then save your G-code onto your SD card ready to print. I was pretty happy with the print quality for my very first print. The Prusa Grey filament was looking great too. I decided to do a second version for comparison with Slicer Prusa Edition. At first I was expecting differences, but then afterwards I read online that it's the exact same slicing software just with the normal slicer front end. Now I hadn't used Slicer in quite a few years, but the interface looked exactly the same as I remember it. As this software came bundled with the driver package, it came with all the profiles needed to get printing straight away. How did the second one look? Well, excellent as well. In Angus's follow-up video, a lot of people chose to scale up their egg to make sure the pieces would rotate free of each other. I decided for my one that I would do it at the original scale for the challenge. I'm pleased to say that after some gentle prying, I managed to get the layers apart and the eggs rotated the three separate sections as they should be. I put them out as decorations for my family Easter lunch and my family thought they were pretty novel. For comparison's sake, here's one that I did in gold PLA on my Cocoon Audi 3D printer. In fairness, I didn't really spend any time leveling the bed, but you can see the zero chance of the three separate pieces rotating apart and functioning as they should be. Now by this time I was spending an increasing amount of time on the Prusa i3 Facebook group. There are many supportive and generous members on there. None more so than a gentleman named Chris, who spends a lot of time getting profiles just right and then uploading them for everyone else to use. I downloaded his configuration files for Slicer and that means it was time to print a Benchy. Now this is probably the best FDM Benchy I've ever printed, edging out the version I did on my Cocoon Create Touch a couple of months ago. Now that one was actually a pretty good print, but we can see here there's less artifacts on the surface of the printer, despite the fact the print speed is actually faster. My only complaint at this stage was some very fine stringing. Just for a laugh, here's a comparison with the cheapest i3 you can get on eBay, the CTC Pro B. I'll be making a full comparison of the three printers in detail at a later stage. Time to print something that needed to be dimensionally accurate. I recently made a video on how to put together the Volpa Robotics fidget spinner. This project is open source and is an ideal way to learn soldering and basic electronics. I'm pleased to say that the parts printed out accurately and I was able to assemble the kit without any drums. Can I also note that on this print and all the others, just how satisfying it is to use the spring steel bed. Using any other printer now, it seems totally archaic to use a scraper to get off the part. If you haven't seen my video on the rainbow fidget spinner, check it out. It's a pretty cool project. So far I've been really impressed with what Slicer could do. One particular highlight was how accurate it was, down to the minute, for the time estimations for each print. However, being a simplified 3D user for the last couple of years, I thought I should put it through its paces as well. I once again headed to the Facebook page and in the file section, sure enough, there were multiple profiles to use with simplified 3D. I decided I'd stick with the good thing and go for Chris's once again. The next parts I printed also needed to be dimensionally accurate. The project was to create a series of pulleys in various sizes that would fit onto a motor shaft as well as Lego axles. This is an engineering project my students do to teach them about gearing and mechanical advantage. I did a couple of tests to get the tolerances right in my 3D model and then I printed heaps and heaps of these. Plate after plate of the pulleys came out without a hitch and everything was dimensionally accurate and working for the project at school. Time to print something that was decorative but also needed to be dimensionally accurate. A little while ago on the front page of Thingiverse was this articulated butterfly. I printed one out on my Cocoon Create Touch and I was pretty happy with it. So I decided I'd do the exact same print on the Mark III. It turned out pretty good, functioning exactly how it should and it was a joy to get off the build plate without damaging. 
Now this really got me thinking, because there's something I'd wanted to print for a long, long time but never had a printer with enough accuracy to do so. This print required the precise mating of many tiny, tiny parts. Here it is in preview. Can you guess what it is? Even when it's finished, you probably can't see the beauty of it until I pick it up. And then all of a sudden, wow. This chainmail was fully 3D printed and it worked beautifully. That fine stringing was everywhere, so I had to take the pieces in my hands and manipulate them to break all the webs. But after that, the way it flows is absolutely stunning. Every single person that I showed this to was absolutely amazed. Their mind was blown. Just for fun, I scaled the model up to 150% and made another copy. It turned out great too, but I think the original version in its smaller scale is a little bit more satisfying in your hands. The last thing I printed for this video, I wanted to be big. Enter the gyroid cube. I decided I'd print this thing without any support material to see how good the bed adhesion was. The first version didn't stick that well. That's because I have my print set so the live Z is as minimal as possible. I generally want the bottom layer of the print squished as little as possible because I don't want it to pyramid out and ruin the accuracy of the print. The good news is you can change the live Z in between prints and I did so to get it closer to the bed. Second time wasn't quite enough, but the third time it went pretty well. Check out this time lapse. The finished print is pretty damn cool. I did this one in glow in the dark and it looks even better at night time. If you angle it just the right way, you can see through, even though it's completely solid from other angles. Now the lack of support material did hurt it and there's some pretty rough edges on the undersides. That however is not the fault of the printer and I felt very comfortable leaving this printer to go for its longest print yet. So you might be wondering, did I have any problems? And yes, I have had three. The good news is two out of the three were my fault. On one of the benches I printed, I left the temperature setting on ABS instead of PLA and the bed was too hot and the benchy came loose and made a mess of itself. Another time I had a repeated error at the start of a print as the Z-probe was going around trying to measure the bed. I found out after a little bit of head scratching that the problem was the spring sheet sitting up on top of one of the screws at the rear and not flat. Easy fix. The only persistent problem I've had that I think is safe to blame on the printer is when I'm retracting filament to take it out. Quite often when I go to the setting in the menu to remove filament, it reverses out and tells me to grab it straight away, but there's a little bit of tension as I try to tug it. And when I eventually get it out, I can see there's a little ball on the end that gets stuck in the extruder. Unfortunately, on two occasions, I had to undo the two screws that hold on the extruder so I could open it up and pull it out manually. I guess it's time for my summary. Let's start with the pros. First pro has to be the print quality. Out of this box, this thing has performed very, very well. Now I'm not saying the prints are perfect and there might be printers that are more expensive and can get even better prints, but out of the box, this thing has been great. The firmware is constantly being updated to improve quality and I guess the best is yet to come. The next one, which has been a revelation for me, is the bed. The thought of never having to level the bed again blows my mind and it's just so, so good. Quite often this has been the caveat for many a good printer. Anytime you're relying on the user to get everything perfectly level, there's a fair chance they won't get it quite right and the quality of the prints will suffer. The probing sequence at the start of each print is really fast and I'm very confident in its ability because I never had any first layer issues after I set my Z height correctly at the start of the calibration. Still on the topic of the bed, removing the prints is just so, so good. Once again, the thought of never having to use one of these again is so amazing. Even on a really well-tuned printer, Getting this underneath has a big risk of damaging the edge and when it finally comes, an even bigger risk of cutting your finger. For me, I would recommend buying this printer on the strength of that one feature alone. Next plus is the smart features. I tested all of them and all of them except one worked perfectly. The auto loading of the filament is super convenient and the power panic worked exactly like it should. And I've already spoken about just how much I like the automatic Z bed leveling and the mesh correction. Now this is a nice segue into the next feature that I really love and that is just how quiet this machine is. On normal mode, it's already a lot, lot quieter than any other printer that I own. But then you switch it to self mode and it's really, really quiet. Quiet enough that I've been able to record videos with it running in the background and have it not ruin my sound. For a typical user using this in their house, that's a really welcome feature. For a school looking to invest in a printer to run inside the classroom, well, it's even better. Now my last two pros don't relate directly to the printer, but more to the experience of using the printer. And the first of those is how plug and play it is. Now I built the kit and I thought the instructions were excellent, but I imagine buying one pre-assembled would be even smoother than the experience that I had. 
Prusa Control software is extremely easy to use, and as you get more advanced, you're welcome to use any other slice of software that you like, just like I did. Prusa has released a bunch of videos on how to get the best out of your printer, and if you really get stuck, there's always the live support on their website. And let's not forget this, an actual hard copy of a printing handbook. Most of the problems you're likely to encounter are covered in here, and it's also got an excellent guide comparing and contrasting different materials and how to get the best out of each of them. How good is that? Now my final point that relates to the experience of using the printer is to do with the community. What does this mean for you? Well, it's just another way to solve problems and get help and advice. The other advantage is users creating the time to make upgrade parts as well as slicing profiles that they generally put online for free. If you find something like this and you take advantage of it, take the time to thank the person that created it for you. Thanks, Chris. So let's look at the downsides, and I have to say I haven't found many. The first for me is that out of all of the smart features, one of them didn't work, and that was the crash detection. I tested this just like Prusa's video described by pinching the rod and letting the extruder carriage bash into my finger, but it just didn't really work. It took about 10 goes before anything really happened, and by then it had moved off course enough to have a significant layer shift, which means when it did go back to home and then recover the print, a lot of it was really mangled. The other problem I had I've already documented in this video, and that's when you're trying to remove the filament, there's a little blob on the end and it gets a little bit stuck. On two occasions I had to undo the two screws that hold the extruder arm in place and pull it out manually. Now the final downside is not necessarily one for me, but I could understand a lot of people would think it is, and that's the price. You can't ignore the fact that there is a myriad of cheap Chinese printers around, and a lot of them are based off this because it's open source. Now the truth is, with some tinkering, a lot of those cheaper ones can probably produce the same print quality as this printer here. But I guess that's the point. What's happening with this printer is it works straight out of the box and it's got a range of advanced features that you're not going to be able to emulate on a cheaper model. Now I know when the printer was launched there was a range of the smart features that hadn't actually been put in the firmware yet and there was a lot of angry people. Now since I didn't get my printer at the very beginning, a lot of time has passed and Prusa have had time to iron out some of these problems and introduce all of the features into the firmware that they promised in the beginning. Compared to the cheaper printers, you're going to get excellent customer service and they're going to stand by their product and if they make an error from what I've seen in the forums, they will send the new parts as long as you ask politely. Hell, even if you don't ask politely, you're still going to get your parts. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm very happy with this printer and what I've produced on it so far and it's going to be my go-to for all of my printing from now on. I've got a lot of great 3D printed projects coming up, so hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.